A massive omega-3 study has just been presented and it sparked fierce controversy. It's called the RESPECT EPA study. So omega-3 is made up of EPA and DHA. So this trial was only looking at EPA. And the study wanted to see what happens when EPA is given to patients that already have coronary artery disease. So this is diseased blood vessels around the heart who are already being treated with statins. Patients were randomized to take either EPA at 1,800 milligrams or a control and the study was around two and a half thousand patients. Patients were followed up for around five years but here's one of the controversial things. This was an open label study so this means that the participants they knew exactly whether they were taking the control or whether they were taking the EPA so it was not a double blind study. Moving to the results the primary outcome was cardiovascular death and myocardial infarction. So in the EPA group this happened in 10.9 percent of people whereas in the control group group, it happened 14.9%, so there's a clear trend of improvement, however this did not reach statistical significance. However in a couple of secondary outcomes, this did reach statistical significance, so it does look like there is a trend towards improvement when people are taking EPA supplements. The study finished by concluding that among Japanese patients with chronic coronary artery disease already being treated with statin therapy, EPA may be associated with a reduction in adverse cardiovascular outcomes. That all sounds great, but here's the first bit of controversy. In terms of adverse events, there was an increase in gastrointestinal disorders. That's not too big a deal. What is a big deal is the new onset of atrial fibrillation in the EPA group. So atrial fibrillation is where the top bit of the heart is going into spasm. So there was double the amount of atrial fibrillation in the EPA group. So there are clear risks of taking EPA. So we need to be absolutely certain that we're going to get significant benefits from taking EPA because we certainly don't want to take something that's only going to cause us harm. So how certain are we that we will get benefits from EPA supplements? Well, this study is certainly not the first to look at EPA supplementation. We have the Reduce It trial and the Jealous trial, both of which showed benefits with EPA supplements. However, we've got a separate study called the Strength Study, which showed no benefit even for patients at high cardiovascular risk. So which study are we to believe? Is there a benefit of taking EPA? Well, Dr. Steve Nissen of the Cleveland Clinic, who was the lead investigator of the strength study, he is a fierce critic of the Reduce It trial. And here's why. In the Reduce It study, they used a mineral oil as a placebo. Now, in a perfect world, a placebo should have no effect on patients. That way, we can get a true representation as to the benefit or harm of the intervention, and in this case, the EPA. The trouble is, though, the mineral oil was actually increasing LDL cholesterol, as well as high sensitivity CRP, which is a marker of inflammation. So this so-called placebo was boosting cholesterol and making inflammation worse. So in the Reduce It study, is it just that the placebo was causing harm and the EPA had no effect, and that explains the differences between the two groups? Unsure, but my point is that we cannot rely on the Reduce It study to say that there's going to be a clear benefit with EPA supplements. And that brings us onto the controversy with the new Respect EPA study. So Steve Nissen is highly critical of the RESPECT EPA study and does not believe that it should be used to support the EPA data from the Reduce It trial. He says that there are many limitations of the RESPECT EPA trial and make it uninterpretable. It just doesn't meet contemporary standards for clinical studies. He goes on to say that I don't think it sheds any light at all on the debate over the efficacy of EPA in cardiovascular disease. Dr. Nissen notes that this new study had a large dropout and protocol violation rate. He says that there was a massive loss of patients over the six to eight year follow-up and therefore it would have been a very selective population that lasted the six years in the study. Patients that dropped out are different to those who stay in, so they are cherry picking the patients that persisted in the study. There is enormous bias here. Another weakness is the open label design. Everyone knew who was getting what and blinding is important in a study. My overall takeaway is that there might be a benefit of taking EPA supplements, but that needs to be balanced against the risks of atrial fibrillation. Personally, I still take omega-3 supplements, so that's the combined EPA and DHA, and I do this 
because a Mayo Clinic meta-analysis found statistically significant reductions in the risks of heart attacks with a high-grade certainty. And that's the primary goal here. We're trying to reduce heart attacks. So make sure to check out this next video here on cholesterol and how to lower it correctly. A massive thank you to donotage.org for their $10,000 donation to my rapamycin study. They are a health research organization and to benefit from their ingredients as well as a 10% discount code, check out the pinned comment.